Hello, this is Guava Moment here with the results for week three. For challenge six, turning water into water and sodium fluoride, so I think a lot of you realize that the problem was if you try to fuse water uh, in a certain way, if you try to fuse two hydrogens together, you make helium, which has no bonds. Since there are no bonders in the system, you have to preserve the original bonds to make sodium fluoride, so you can't fuse a hydrogen into a hydrogen that makes helium. You can't fuse oxygen and then hydrogen into a hydrogen because that makes neon and that would kill a bond. So I think uh, a lot of you realize that the best way to do this is to do something like this. First you fuse a hydrogen directly into an oxygen. That makes a fluorine. If you then rotate on the fuser, fuse it again, you make neon. And from that point, fuse a neon directly into a hydrogen and you get your sodium fluoride. It's And... Uh, then I'll put a water and you're pretty much done. So 187 cycles. So this was the solution by Super Great Friend. He did a, one of the common things which was to rotate an oxygen on top of the sensor to make a uh, neon. But he made two, uh, I wouldn't say so much mistakes, but there were two things in this that would uh, prevent this from getting a little bit faster. Uh, the first mistake is, well he, he don't need these. The second mistake is that a lot of people seem to focus on making sodium fluoride as fast as possible. And then, uh, oh yeah, I need a water, and then you move it, the water over. Turns out that you can save quite a bit of time by moving the water over at a different stage of the solution. This was my solution. I do the same thing. You rotate the water and make a neon, fuse the neon together. But I have blue take water out in the middle of the sodium fluoride production. So once blue gets the neon done, then I move an oxygen out of the way, or I move a uh, water out of the way, and red comes in and finishes the sodium fluoride. This makes things a little bit faster. 161. This was in the top 16, as was a super great friend. His was the 16th solution. But we're getting faster. If you want to get even faster than that, you could have some kind of crazy solution like this by sibling of TB. Didn't f uh, get any solutions that looked anything like this. I always like these linear ones. Those are always those always look so neat. 157 cycles. Quite a lot of people came up with this solution. Again, rotate to create a neon, kind of drop it there. Come in, make your sodium fluoride. 151. So this is 151 cycles. Uh, the, looking at this, I think there could be a way to make it one cycle faster if uh, blue could start by grabbing this first oxygen or this first hot oxygen in the water. How would we do that? Well, let's see. Start there. Grab. But this. Now blue grabs that on the first cycle, comes through, and drops and outputs at the exact same time. I have these backwards. But then red drops, blue instantly outputs, and the cycle begins again. 150 cycles, 27 symbols. This was the number one solution submitted by four different people. From 4th to 1st it was Wild M, The Knife, Jbor, and finally Cannibal9000. So congratulations Cannibal9000 on the number one solution for this challenge. For this challenge, as a lot of people realize, you only need one, at one input. And then if you do a whole bunch of crazy stuff, you can get a bunch of hydrogens outputted pretty quickly. 32 cycles was a okay time. This was submitted by PIN code. I don't think it ended up being a number one or in a placing in the top 16, but I did like this uh, thing here where red inputs, blue grabs, blue gra blue drops, red grabs, so that it's essentially red grabbed on the first cycle it could. And then uh, if there were some other timing issues here, it's kind of a way to switch around the red and blue positions, which I thought was kind of clever.
So I grabbed this solution kind of at random. This was by Fractious. Um, looking at this, I kind of like this because there are no flip-flops. It looks a lot neater and organized. And he also mentioned that this one output right here just outputted six atoms. There are only three output commands in the whole thing for ten, uh, for ten outputs. I thought that was kind of neat. Twenty-three cycles. Now this was a solution by added space. There was one thing uh, I wanted to show in this. Right here, blue is starting to output atoms in the atom in the output zone. But there's two helium sitting down here. I'm not totally sure about the way outputting works. I believe it just gives each of these squares a certain number and tries to output, goes through and sees which one is the first one there. So the next one to get outputted seems to be this one. Now then uh, outputting here where there was a helium here before, so I'm not totally sure the way outputting works in these 16 squares. I hope a lot of you tried to figure it out a little bit to help with your solution make it go faster. So we got that down to 20 cycles. He was, a, uh, I think he was the one on the thread that kept mentioning that maybe sub-20 was possible, but he never got it. Pseudo-dude, however. Nineteen cycles. This was, he was the only one to get nineteen cycles, and this was the number one solution. Something really weird happens in this, though. Right here! Red's about to hit split, blue's about to hit output. Since red happens first, it's gonna split this, it should collide with the hydrogen. But somehow that hydrogen gets outputted, and then it gets split, but how did the hydrogen get outputted when it was still connected? It's it's weird. It's almost like split, debonds first, then blue commands get priority, and then it actually transports atoms. It's it's weird because this should crash because it's connected. It should split. The lithium that comes off this nitrogen should try to come here and, and crash. If blue tries to output right now first, there's it can't because everything's all connected. So how does it just output this one hydrogen there? I don't know, but uh, it's kind of clever for a pseudo dude to figure that out, if it was intentional, of course. And that brings me to this solution. This was uh, submitted by Wild M. It, it wasn't his fastest solution, but this is the greatest solution to Space Chem I have ever seen in my life. It used to be Oxygen Snake, but uh, this one is absolutely beautiful. We just gotta watch this. It solves, crashes, and then solves. So let's see that one more time. Goes up, outputs some stuff like normal. A wild M thought bring two inputs over might speed things up. But uh, where is it? Okay, right here. Blue is continuously outputting everything in, in the uh, area here. So that hydrogen goes. Blue is next going to output this hydrogen, but red's about to hit the split, which will make the helium crash into the helium. For some reason, this hydrogen gets outputted, it solves, then red hits the split, which causes it to crash. I, I love that. That's <laughs> I've never seen anything like that, and it's beautiful. I also wanted to show off this. Uh, someone who's not a member of uh, SA sent this to me. He took pin code solution for this uh, challenge from the first week, which ended up as uh, 22 cycles, 46 symbols. He managed to get 22 cycles, 44 symbols. So this would have been the number one solution if anyone submitted it. He uh, shaved out two, uh, two symbols off of it. So it's uh, always kind of neat to see that even if you think something's absolutely perfect, you never know. Someone uh, might find a better way. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll see you all for week four.